Hello students, greetings of the day. I am Mrs. Usha Vasani. Welcome you all to the RKC online social studies class. I hope you all are at the best of your health and so must be your family members. Students, today we are going to start a new chapter, chapter number 15, The Coming of the British. I have divided this chapter into different parts for your better understanding because today we are going to start this chapter and we are going to discuss in detail about the different eras uh, that is the, the history is divided into different eras and then we will proceed with the modern history so let's begin with the learning hello students greetings of the day I am Mrs. Usha Vasani. Welcome you all to RKC Online Social Studies class. Today we are going to study chapter number 15, The Coming of the British, part 3. I hope you all must have watched previous two videos and whoever has not watched previous two videos, please do watch that first and then get connected to part 3. So let's get started. Students, let us do a short recap of previous two videos. In the first video, we discussed about the different periods of Indian history that is ancient period, medieval period and the modern period which we are talking right now. Then we understood about the history of our own country India. Then we discussed about the advent of different Europeans invading India. Europeans like Portuguese, Dutch, uh, British and French. But out of all these uh, colonies, British uh, stayed longer in India. Then talking about the second video, we understood about the colonial rule uh, was established. How did uh, it started? I mean, the British started establishing their colony. What was the reason or what uh, attracted British to invade India? Then we talked about British journey in India from trading to the settlement of colony and then further being more ambitious. Then we discussed about who allowed British to enter India like with whose permission who was the Mughal king ruling over India at that time we saw just a glimpse about Aurangzeb's life because he was a ruler who allowed uh, British to enter India then uh, we also discussed about the changing of in British intentions entering India though after the merchant as merchant then we uh, discussed about the Battle of Plassey which has made a mark in Indian history. It was the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb who allowed them and British started uh, growing with their ambition after the death of Aurangzeb. British became more and more ambitious and they wanted to take control over the province of Bengal because uh, it was the biggest and the richest province of India in those times. Because they could not succeed in their intentions, they started disobeying the orders of the Nawab of Bengal, who was Sirajuddullah, who was ruling over uh, Bengal. This angered the Nawab and he declared a war against British. That battle came to be known as Battle of Plassey. Though Nawab uh, def was defeated because one of his army chief betrayed him during the war. After that, Nawab of Bengal was, uh, uh, he was captured and then he was killed. So that was all about B Battle of Plassey we discussed in the previous two videos. Now, in today's learning, we are going to discuss about what happened after the Battle of Plassey, 
uh, when British emerged to be victorious under the leadership of Robert Clive. Uh, then we'll discuss about who came as a new Nawab of Bengal. After his coming, that was Mir Jafar who came as a new Nawab. He was again replaced by Mir Qasim. We'll know about what was the reason behind the change of Nawab from Mir Jafar to Mir Qasim. There was again a battle against British and that battle came to be known as Battle of Buxar. We will also discuss about the causes of this battle. There was again some, uh, there were again some policies which were introduced by the governor generals of uh, British. Now these two policies, what were these policies? We will discuss in detail and talk about that, that policies in uh, this video. So these are the learning objectives of today's learning. So let's get started students. Children, now let us know what happened after the Battle of Plassey. The Battle of Plassey was fought on 23rd June 1757. Nawab of Bengal, Sirajuddaula fought against the British East India Company. Consequently, the East India Company emerged victorious because Mir Jafar, the commander-in-chief of Sirajuddaula's army, Amichat, Manekchand and Jagatshed. All these betrayed the Nawab of Bengal during the war and sided with the English East India Company. After that, Mir Jafar's son Miran murdered Nawab Sirajuddaula. Subsequently, Mir Jafar was now made the new Nawab of Bengal and in return for this favour, Mir Jafar granted the free trade passes of Bihar, Bengal and Odisha to English East India Company. And this was the first step towards the conquest of Bengal. I hope students you understood that as British gave the power of Bengal in the hands of Mir Jafar because he betrayed his Nawab that is Sirajuddaula under who him who was as a commander in chief that was Mir Jafar he betrayed his own Nawab and sided British. Because of that now British promised Mir Jafar that they would help Mir Jafar to take over the throne of Bengal. Now let us see and in return they wanted a free trade in the province of Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. This was the favour they asked from Mir Jafar. Now let us see about Mir Jafar's journey of Bengal. After Mir Jafar took over the Bengal, he received military support from British East India Company until 1760. That was when Battle of Plassey took place, it was 1757. So, almost for four years, Mir Jafar was protected or given the support of military of British till 1760. But British were being more and more ambitious. So, Mir Jafar failed to satisfy various British demands and out of anger, even he waged war against the British East India Company because now the company was forcing him to abdicate, abdicate meaning to resign in favor of Mir Qasim who was one of his, uh, one of his relatives. So, the company was forcing him to abdicate and Mir Jafar refused. So again, there was a war between him and the British. Why Nawab uh, Mir Jafar had a war? Because he could not satisfy the ambitions of the British. 
actually british made him the nawab because they installed him as a puppet nawab however he really realized that the british had high expectations and he attempted to set free from the british with the help of the dutch because now me jafar was not getting any way to uh, get rid of british he went to the dutch and asked them to help him to drive out british from bengal in 1758 robert clive discovered through his agent that mir jafar had made an agreement with the dutch against the british the dutch were defeated by the british and british retaliated by compelling mir jafar to renounce the throne in favor of mir qasim that is his i um, mean mir jafar's son in law so this was all of switching mir jafar to mir qasim because british wanted nawab though he was appointing nawab but they wanted a puppet nawab so this was the reason why mir jafar was replaced from the uh, throne of bengal and it, he had to hand it the control of bengal in hands of mir qasim students now let us see what happens after the coming of mir qasim to the throne mir qasim was made the nawab of bengal from year 1760 to 1763 ad the british east india company made him nawab of bengal by replacing mir jafar his own father in law besides the free trade a huge amount of money as compensation was also paid to the british government because of the war means whatever war british used to have with the nawabs they would take the compensation from us that is from the nawabs the indian nawabs mir jafar could not meet the demands of the company british ultimately had become more and more demanding which was not possible for mir jafar to fulfill their demand and so only he left but the same thing started happening with mir qasim as well mir qasim was an independent and skilled nawab bengal had ever seen he was so self sufficient and very skilled but ideology of independent thinking he introduced several reforms during his reign for example the expenditure on administration and palaces were reduced and he redirected those funds to the manufacturing of firelocks and guns mir qasim soon grew tired of british control and set about consolidating his power and position his some of the new reforms were that to improve his finances he tried to force the employees of the east india company to pay duty for their private trade which they were using to amass their personal wealth children if you remember when british defeated siraj ud daula they wanted a free trade and that was the reason behind battle of plassey and at that time when mir jafar took over he granted british to do free trade in bihar bengal and odisha but soon the ambitions of british started increasing and that was the reason again he was defeated and replaced by his own son in law mir qasim now the same thing was faced by mir qasim that this british east india company is only and only looking after their personal wealth when mir qasim was unable to do so to he was means unable to stop them he granted free trade to all the indians as well because he could not stop east india company people that is the british so he granted free trade to all the indians also this placed the indian 
trades on equal footing with the company traders. But this was not acceptable by the British. Let us see what happens now. All the reforms which were set by Mir Qasim that annoyed the officials of British East India Company as they only wanted Mir Qasim to be a puppet Nawab. Mir Qasim had always tried to keep himself away from the influence of the British. Because of their ambitions, because of the British ambitions growing day by day, that caused a number of conflicts between Mir Qasim and the British. Mir Qasim was defeated thrice from June to September 1763 by British. Means when Mir Qasim started revolting, he was also uh, not liked by the British officials and the British officials tried to attack him and tried to throw him out again he would come back again they were they would attack on him and that happened three times in between three months now Mir Qasim got tired of British now let us see what he does after this children now as a result of that means again and again he was defeated and thrown out due to that uh, successive defeats he was forced to flee Bengal means he was forced to go away from the uh, uh, his province that is from Bengal to Allahabad where he met Sujauddaula the Nawab of Awadh. At that time means during those times uh, Shah Alam II had just took the throne as a Mughal emperor and he wanted to bind several states as one physical stronger empire which included Bengal as well. Now at that time Bengal included the areas of Bihar and Odisha means that whole area was which is now West Bengal, Bihar, Odisha different but at that time Bengal means Bihar, Odisha was included in Bengal only and solely I told you that it was the richest and the biggest province. Now to achieve this goal, Shah Alam II, that is I told you that he was a Mughal emperor and he had just come up to the uh, throne and he wanted to increase his territory and make one single uh, rule out of several states he wanted to combine them. So to achieve this, he needed to overthrow the British dominance over these uh, all these areas where uh, British were ruling, means they were dominating over most part of Bengal. So first to take control over Bengal Shah Alam had to throw British out just to get out of their dominance. However he was unable to throw them. Mir Qasim on the other side took shelter under Suja Uddala, the Nawab of Awadh where he had gone to take shelter and so he uh, went and asked the help from him. Now Suja Uddala had always wanted to destroy the English supremacy in the Bengal region. So this was the common thing between all the three of them that Mir Qasim was angry because he was thrown out of Bengal. Su Suja Uddala who was uh, ruling at Allahabad at that time he was uh, the Nawab of Awadh he also did not much appreciated the supremacy of uh, British. On the other side, Shah Alam II, the Mughal emperor, also wanted to bind several states and make one physical stronger empire of his own. So at that time, these three people had the same intentions. The three rulers joined their hands against the British and the main cause of the conflict became the share of Bengal. They declared war against English East India Company on 23rd October 1764 at a place called Katkauli which is 6 kilometers away from Buxar. 
Buxar is a part or a place in Bengal. So just like the Battle of Plassey, the Battle of Buxar also did not last more than a few hours, but it also registered itself as one of the most significant battles ever fought in the history of India. Students, the Indian forces were led by Suja Uddala, the Nawab of Awadh, Shah Alam II, the Mughal Emperor, and Mir Qasim, Nawab of Bengal, on one side, and the British forces led by Major Hector Munro, the other side. And finally, the battle took place in Buxar. So students, as I told you that the Battle of Buxar took place in 1764 and it was fought between the Nawab of Bengal, the Nawab of Awadh and the Mughal Emperor on one side and the British on the other side. The British emerged victorious again and thus the English East India Company laid a foundation of colonial rule in India. Gradually, through various policies, they became the rulers of India for a long time. Students, now let us see what were the policies laid by the British and they started spreading trap on Indians. And what were this trap in the means of policies? Let us understand what were those policies. Students, let us understand the subsidiary alliance policy. The British East India Company started an outright war of non-intervention policy and the assumption of the territory of previously subordinated rulers to achieve the political aspiration. Meaning, the subsidiary alliance system was used by Lord Wellesley who was the Governor General from the period of 1798 to 1805 to 1805 sorry to establish the British Empire in India. Now according to the system every ruler in India had to accept to pay a subsidy to the British for maintenance of British Army and return British would protect the kings from their enemies which gave British enormous expansion. It was firstly used by Lord Wellesley who effectively institutionalized the policy of non-intervention which made the Nawab and Nizam's subsidiary allies by signing almost 100 such treaties. Now the uh, allies of Indian states ruler were compelled to accept, means they were forced to accept the permanent garrison of British army within their territories and to pay a subsidy for their the maintenance. The Indian ruler could not employ any European in their service without prior approval of British. The Indians could not negotiate with any other Indian ruler without consulting the Governor General. Now the states which came under the periphery of this policy was the Nizam of Hyderabad. He was the first victim of this policy. French, uh, I mean he was detached, the Nizam was detached from the French and also forbade having al alliances with Maratha without British consent. The second state was Mysore. Then Wellesley compelled Nawab of Awad to accept the policy of subsidiary alliance. Peshwa Bajirao too also subjugated his state under this policy. Many Maratha states like Bosley and Sindhya's 
also accepted the terms of the policy. The last Maratha confederation, that is Holkers, also they accepted the terms of subsidiary alliance. The policy of subsidiary alliance was in reality a document of losing the sovereignty which meant the state did not have any rights of self-defense, of maintaining diplomatic relations, of employing foreign experts and of set its disputes with its neighbors. So ultimately, it, the power ultimately went under the British control. So this was about subsidiary alliance policy. The second policy introduced by the British was the doctrine of lapse. Lord Dalhousie, the Governor General from 1848 to 1856, devised the doctrine. It stated that a king could be annexed if the king died without a male heir. Many kingdoms were annexed. And those kingdoms were Satara, Sambalpur, Udaipur, Nagpur, Jasi, and Avadh. Students, doctrine of lapse was a policy of annexation followed by Lord Delauzi. Now, according to this policy, if the ruler of a dependent state died without a legal heir, his adopted son would not be allowed to occupy the throne and that state would be annexed by to the British Empire uh, during that time in India. In short, according to this policy, if an Indian ruler died without a male heir of his kingdom, then that kingdom would lapse and would become a part of the British company. This act showed now British was dominant in India. It also showed that Mughal were weak and had lost control over many parts of India. Mughal had lost many important states and after one year they also lost Delhi the capital. So this was the effect of the battles like Battle of Plassey and Battle of Buxar. Those two battles, the defeat in those two battles encouraged the British to take charge or to take hold over India and then they slowly started intervening in the politics of India also. Now this was their colonial, the foundation of their colonial rule over India. Students, this is all about today's learning. So today's learning's outcome is that British became very ambitious after they were allowed to trade in India. Their intentions spoiled that not only trading but they wanted to intervene in the politics of India. The two battles made their intentions very strong to rule over India. So we saw about the two battles. And the, then after winning uh, the uh, battles, British introduced some policies which would allow them to dominate over the rule of India. So this is all about today's learning. I hope you all must have enjoyed and uh, I am sure that I would have uh, reached to each one of you. If you have any confusion, please rewind this video and watch it again. I'm sure you will definitely understand. Thank you and stay safe. As of now, I'm signing off. See you soon in another learning video. Till then, keep learning.